Man. Somebody say it's about to shift in this place. I, I, listen, um, I know you guys know me as your pastor. I know. I'm Pastor Bert Guzman. Y'all got to see me every Sunday, every Wednesday. And I'm not trying to be a, a, a puffy about myself because I, I, I'm not into none of that. I really don't care for all that stuff. But I do want you to sit up in your seat tonight and receive from God what he has to sh- flow through me. Okay, come on, somebody. Because I know I'm bubbly, Pastor Bird, out there with you guys, make you laugh and all that. And, and I'll probably do that throughout the message. But there's something a little bit more important this morning that you really want to receive. I like Dr. George and I were talking last night at dinner, and we were talking about how, how like, you can actually pull. You can pull the anointing that God has, has placed on me, placed on him, placed placed on Pastor Sam, placed on Pastor Vic, that you guys out there, you can actually pull and draw from from it and get something, Sister Dora, that will elevate you, enhance you. You guys know what enhance means? It means to intensify, increase, and improve, to bless. Come on, somebody, amen? That's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. Listen, and you can't get the doubt out, get all that out, because all it's about is just believe. Just believe and receive what God has for each and every one of us in this house. Amen? Amen. Come on. Can we put a smile on your face? Amen? It's going to be all right, all right? Come on, let's give God a shout of praise in this house this morning. I'm excited already, doctor. I'm excited to have doctor and, 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 and Georgette here tonight. I almost feel like, uh, y'all go ahead and just start right now, all right, and, and, and let's get it going. But the anticipation of what's going to happen tonight is going to be stirred up. I invited Dr. George to be here this morning for a purpose. I invited him with a purpose. I said, I, uh, the reason being is because I wanted the presence to be here so that it will transition into tonight. Not just he comes in on a Sunday night. And, uh, and then it has to be stirred up. No, no, no. I want the stir. It's already happening right now. It's already happening. So, so the transition is here. And it, all it is is he's going to continue to pour into tonight. And then, and then watch this. And then Pastor Sam's going to be here tonight. And it's going to transition into tomorrow night. And watch this. And then tomorrow night, Pastor Vic's going to be with us. And it's going to transition over into Tuesday night. So it's nothing but a bunch of goo. Just gooey, holy ghost goo. Just, and it's going to be thick in the house. Come on, somebody. Some of y'all going to levitate. Sister Georgia said, what does that mean, levitate? <laughs> I said, we're going to feel light. Shh. Y'all ain't even going to walk out the door. Y'all just going to be like this. You know, that's going to be a little spooky. Anyway so, nah, 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 nah. anyway, so what I'm saying is there's a purpose for this, and it's going to be a very powerful time. Amen? Come on. Somebody say amen in the house. Come on. How many of y'all expecting already? Come on. Y'all expecting? Come on. Expecting? Expecting something to happen? Expecting a breakthrough to happen? Expecting a miracle to happen? Expecting your kids to come back? Expecting your body to be healed? Come on. Expecting your finances to enhance? Come on, somebody. Expecting. Expecting your wife to become more lovable to you? Come on, somebody. Expecting your husband to love you at night, to give you a kiss on the forehead? Come on, somebody. Expecting, 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 expecting. It's going to improve. Things are going to improve. Sarababasaka. Somebody said they're going to improve. You got to speak it. Sometimes you got to speak it. You got to speak it out. Come on. Somebody say it's going to improve. It's going to intensify. Come on. It's going to intensify. Woo, it's going to increase. Come on. Amen. Praise God. Woo. Oof. Oh, glory, glory. 2 Timothy 1.6, King James Translation. Let's go ahead and get back into that. Uh, we're going to talk about stir up the gift this morning. Stir up the gift. Stir up the gift. Stir up the gift. And some of you in here these next three nights, you're, you're going to stir up a gift in one of three ways or if not in all three ways. All right? 2 Timothy 1.6, King James Translation. And it says this, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou, that's you, so say that's me, that you stir up the gift of God. So notice there's something that we got to do. Come on. 
There's something that we got to do. We got to stir up what God has already given us. Stir it up. That means you got to call out on the Holy Ghost. Brother Tony, in the mornings when you're taking a shower, don't just be thinking about weird things in the shower. Be thinking about what God has for you. Well, I'm speaking to somebody in this house. Come on, somebody. You got to think on the Holy Spirit. You got to see that water falling on you, cleansing you, not just washing your physical body, but washing your mind. Come on, somebody. Washing your spirit, uh, washing your soul, uh, washing, cleansing, uh, taking over. That that is the very symbolized uh, Holy Spirit coming upon you and taking over you so that the Holy Spirit can lead you into all truth uh, so that he can bring Bring all things to your remembrance uh, so that he can baptize uh, every single thing you touch, including your family. Come on. You got to stir it up. Sister Rachel, we got to stir it up. Brother Lewis, we got to stir it up. Stir it up. Pues como lo hago? Como hago la stir it up? Well, how, how do you stir up a fight? You know how to stir up a fight? You talk mess. Oh, see, you're a cowboy fan? Oh, you a Redskin fan? You a Redskin fan? What that, Pastor Sam? <laughs> that don't matter. Okay, see, see how it's stirring it up already? Mira, mira, it's already stirring it up. Mira, I'm stirring them up already. What about them cowboys? Oh, <laughs> Woo! See how I'm stirring it up? See how, are y'all with me? See how I'm stirring it up, Sister Dura? See how I'm stirring it up? Let me call you a name, Brother Jesse. ¿Qué pasa? I'll end up with a black eye. Why? Because I stirred something up in you. I stirred something up. Can you stir up excitement? Yeah, you can stir up excitement. Can you stir up arousal? I ain't looking at nobody. Yeah, you can stir up arousal. Why? By the things they say. Mira, if somebody comes up to Sister Christy, oh, you look so pretty today, Sister. Oh, thank you. Something stirred up on the inside of you. But what did it take for somebody to release out of this, what the Bible calls, las trompas? The trumpet. Release a shout of praise like a trumpet. <laughs> That's why they call them trompas. <laughs> I guess. Um, is that a bad word? <laughs> it sounds kind of bad. Huh? Trompa. I used to know this friend of mine, Dr. George. His name, his name was uh, his name was Joe. But he was an older man. Older man. And and for some reason, I don't know why his lips sound being kind of wangos. And so I don't know why. I don't know why. But we used to call him trompas yule. I don't know why. We, it, was, it was weird. And he liked it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's what he used to. Anyhow, so uh, look, that's how you stir up the Holy Spirit. You got to say, you got to call him. Come on, somebody. You got to speak. You got to stir it up. Holy Spirit. That's why we stir up the Holy Spirit. Y'all guys know it. Since July the 4th, we've been stirring up the Holy Ghost. That's why I say in, that, in Jude 120, beloved, uh, build yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, praying him in. You got to pray in the Holy Spirit when you're in that shower in the morning. You got to pray in the Holy Spirit when you're in that bedroom in the morning. You got to pray in the Holy Spirit before you go to your job site. You got to pray in the Holy Spirit to your business. You got to pray in the Holy Spirit into your wife. Someone say amen. You got to pray in the Holy Spirit into your husband. Come on, somebody. You got to pray in. You got to pray him in. You got to call him in. Come on, somebody holy spirit take authority over my mind take authority over my family take authority over this sickness take authority over these bills i'm telling you this is we're in a good season we're in a good season And what God's telling us is stir up the gift that I have already given unto you. He is, where is he at? Why we have scripture over the enhanced conference like that? 
take the background. <laughs> it says, put, stir up the gift of God. Watch this. Which is in you. It's already there, Brother Hector. Ya está adentro de ti. El, 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 ¿Cómo se dice en español? The gift, el don. El don de Dios. ¿Cómo? Aviva, aviva, stir it up, manéalo. Oh, Jesus, come on, rababa. Aviva, aviva el don de Dios que Él te dio, que está adentro de ti. Sister Amanda like that. Look at that. She started laughing. She said, <laughs> You know what's happening, Sister Amanda? There's a stirring up of the gift right now. There's a stirring up of the gifts happening. I'm telling you, you can't think all this. Don't, don't be too educated. I know some of y'all here are educated. Y'all educated. You got master's degrees, bachelor's degrees. Uh, you got PhD player hater degrees. You got all that stuff. That's fine. But here, here's the deal. Listen, listen. No, no, no. You, sometimes you, you got to put the education to the side and just get in the Holy Spirit and let him lead you and guide you into everything that you need to know. Come on, somebody. Amen. Come on. You want to know where your child is at late at night? Ask the Holy Spirit. And, then he'll, and just say, Holy Spirit, bring him back home by 10 o'clock. That brother will be there at 9.59. Come on. Uh, we were watching the news the other day, and there was a little young, young boy that got lost in the woods. Y'all remember that story in the news not too long ago? Little young boy. And my wife was like, man, that just breaks my heart. Uh, was he three years old? Three year, a little three-year-old boy with his dog went into the woods, and then only the dog came back. And I told my wife, I said, man, that little boy's in the woods. I said, he's in there. They're going to find him. They said that the next day, there was a gentleman that they were having a Bible study right there somewhere in the woods. There was three days later, there was a gentleman having a, a Bible study right there in, in the woods, in the middle of the woods, some house or something. Yeah, a little house. And uh, watch this. The gentleman that, that was holding the Bible study, he said that the Lord told him. The Bible says that the Spirit is the Lord. It says the Lord told him, go out, and you're going to find that young boy. And you know what happened? He found him. Somebody ought to hand clap right there. Because you know who led him? The Holy Spirit led him. The Holy Ghost led him. The Holy Spirit is the one that speaks to us on the inside. He is the living water that's on the inside of us. Come on. Come on, we got to stir up that water. How many of y'all ever drank so much water when you walk? So, yeah, boom, 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 I don't know, what, what is that? Is that, 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 is Listen, you have that on the inside in your spirit, man, right here all the time. You have him inside here. And he has, he carries, he has, he'll project, he puts out the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding, what you need to do. But you know what? So too many people, they just can't believe that. Come on, Jesus. But in here, we got some believers. Come on, somebody. I'm going to be like Paul, and you're going to be like Timothy. And I'm going to tell you, stir up. And then he said, no, he says, I put thee into remembrance. In other words, mira, mijo. No te olvide. No se te olvide. No te olvide, mijo. Que necesitas que amanear el Espíritu Santo que está adentro de ti. Porque ese Espíritu va a dejar ir una fragrancia, a fragrance that's going to fill the room like the woman with the alabaster jar who broke that expensive perfume on Jesus. That was a lot of money. That was a lot of money. The Bible says that it was a year's worth of wages. That's how much that alabaster jar cost her, that perfume. But when she broke it, Sister Becky, she broke that alabaster jar with oil. Now, this was, this was not like this perfume that we wear now. Okay, you spray it on, and, oh, you know, uh, two hours later, you know, you know, no, this was top notch. This was pure. You know, you know when some of y'all used to be in the club. Y'all remember when y'all used to be in the club back in the day? No, 
Caballero. Y'all forgot? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's good. You left all former conversations behind. And Okay. So, watch this. But y'all remember when y'all used to go in there and give, give, me a, give me a shot of something, something. Some of y'all can fill in the blank. Give me a shot of something, something with no chaser. No le echabas agua. No le eches ni hielo. Más dame lo straight, ahina. ¿Eh? ¿Cómo? Highball. Gloria a Dios. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's not what he's selling in those bottles in there, guys. All right, don't think. You got some of that highball, Dr. George? Esa botella tiene highball, como. Some of y'all are like, we need to go get some of that highball up in there in a minute. <laughs> okay, watch, 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 watch. Remember that. Straight. Because you didn't want nothing. You didn't want nothing covering it. You didn't want to water that thing down. You want, because you were having a bad day, and I need something strong, bartender. ¿Verdad? Okay, watch this. Holy Spirit, pure. No chaser. No water down, nothing. And when he speaks, it's like rushing Waterfall. You know that in, in, in Revelations it talks about that when, when, when Jesus spoke, that it sounded like waterfalls, rushing water falling. And, it, and, and, and somebody explained to me, I, I can't remember who it was, somebody was teaching on it. And they were saying that, it, that if you ever stand next to a waterfall, it is so loud. Loud. They're like, it's so loud, you can't even stand it. I mean, I could do it super loud, but I didn't want to scare somebody in here. But. We're at the uh, racetrack. Somebody's getting fired. They turn that mic off again. <laughs> and, and so, anyway, so, uh, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry, babe. I have to repent. <clears throat> I love you, honey. Thank you, Jesus. Anyway, so, like, um, uh, but watch this. That sound, that's the, that's the voice that comes out of the mouth of God. The, the, the rush. And then, watch this. But the Holy Spirit is the only one who can take that to a still, still small voice. Stir up the gift. Come on, somebody. Stir up the gift. Stir up the gift. Let's go to the amplified version of this scripture. Watch this. And uh, Paul said, that is why I rem would remind you. Remember, he's reminding you. So you got to be reminded. Remember that. Todos los días. Uh, Sister Christy, every, every morning, remind Brother Jesse. Stir up the gift. From now until the end of the year, or even until the, the end of next year, I want you to start reminding yourself. I want you to start reminding your family. I want you to start reminding your kids, hey, stir up the gift. As a matter of fact, go buy you a big old plaque somewhere and put it right there in your living room. Stir up the gift. Stir up the gift. That ought to be the vision for your life. Stir up the gift. Stir up the gift. Before I do anything, I'm going to stir up the gift. Come on. I remind you. He says, I remind you. That is why I would remind you to stir up. Listen to what the word stir up means in the Amplified. To rekindle the embers of. How many of y'all have ever, you know, we still, some of y'all still uh, barbecue with coals? With coals, right? Not that butane stuff. How many of y'all do the butane? You need to get saved. All right, so, all right, no, 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 I'm just kidding. All right, so, you got, <laughs> I still do charcoal. Come on, somebody. My, my meat still tastes like charcoal. Some of us in here, we don't even like to eat. Is that barbecue? Does it taste like charcoal? It got like it kind of got like that's part of the barbecue is to taste a little bit like that lighter fluid. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, right? What about it's gotta have a little taste. What kind of seasoning did you put on? Salt, pepper, lemon pepper, uh, cumin. Uh, but did you put some lighter fluid? Porque necesito un poquito lighter fluid en ese. All right. So, anyways, but watch this. When you have the charcoal, when you when you have the barbecue pit going, right? Barbecue pit, and and and, and the and the fire. You start that thing up. <laughs> At the beginning, it's all, and then eventually it dies down, and it turns into those little embers, you know, a coal, and it's lit up, but it's hot enough to cook something. It is. It's hot enough to cook something. Come on. But here it's saying you need to rekindle that thing. How many of you ever put a little, a little, 
paper así na, and rekindle that fire y luego hace así na. you know this is what God's saying aquí rekindle those embers because here's here's um, well let me let me read the rest of it and then I'll get into what I was going to say about that okay so rekindle the embers of here's the other one fan the flame of and keep burning ooh keep burning Keep burning the gracious gift of God. Listen to what the next line says. The inner fire. El fuego. Amen. Que está dentro. Que it has maybe gone out just a little bit. Maybe the fire's not there anymore like it used to. That is in you by means of the laying on of my hands with those of the elders at your ordination. Can I tell you guys something? There's going to be some of you in here that you need to rekindle the fire. In other words, what Rome, uh, Revelations 2.4 says, get back to your first love. Remember when you first got saved, watch this, uh, Revelations 2.4. Nevertheless, I have something against you because you have left your first love. Oh, let me read it in some other translations here real quick. In the Passion Translation, it says, but I have this against you. You have abandoned the passionate love you had for me at the beginning. Oh, praise God. Did y'all see that? The Message Translation says, you have walked away from your first love. Hmm. And now this church he's talking to is the church of Ephesus, which is one of the greatest churches that, we, that they have there in the book of Revelations. And they did a bunch of great, amazing, incredible things. He says, but there's this one thing that I have against you. And this is God speaking to them. You have left your first love. So there's going to be some of you in here, you're going to have to stir up. Or what's going to happen is there's going to be a stirring of the love of Jesus coming back into your life. There's going to be a stirring up of, of the passion for God like you once had when you first got saved and you were on fire for God. And you couldn't wait to tell everybody about Jesus. You couldn't wait to be praying for people. You couldn't wait to pray in the spirit like you used to. There is something that's going to happen during this conference that's going to rekindle the fire that you once had. Come on, somebody. That's what's going to stir up on the inside of you. You're going to come back to your first love. Because, you know, fire really is significant, significant of love, passion, desire. You know, when you tell your wife, I love you, you're saying more than just a little heart emoji. You're saying, I have a passion for you. I have a want for you. Come on. I have a drive for you. I want you more than anything else. That's what you're saying when you say, I love you. Because the same thing you do when you say, I love God. You're saying, I have a passion for you, God. I want you more than anything else. There's nothing else more that can compare to you. Amen. And we're going to get back to that. Some of us in this house, we just got to get back to our first love and remember that day. Oh, my gosh, when I just fell in love. I remember, Dr. George, when I told somebody that, man, I fell in love with a man. You know, they looked at me kind of weird. But... Uh, but, but then I told him who it was. I said, it was Jesus, man. I fell in love with Jesus. I couldn't get enough of him. You guys know the story. I've told you guys this before. But when I first got saved, I literally, Brother Hector, wanted to eat the Bible or drink it. Either one of the two. Literally. Literally. Like, every time I'd open this Bible, and I still have it now, it's like, mm, like I just wanted to eat it. Ain't that kind of weird? I may be on a strange addiction show on these days and eating Bible pages. But that's how it was. For some of us in here, that's how it was too. And through this conference, through our, through our gifts that are going to be coming, you're going to get that back. The gift, the stirring up of the love of God is going to come back into your life. The stirring up of that fire and that passion and the rekindling, the fanning of the flames through the words that we're going to be speaking. See, these words carry wind. 
In, the, in Acts chapter 2, the Bible says that when the Holy Spirit came upon the 120 that were in the upper room, it says that there was a, there was a, there was a mighty rushing wind that came into that room. Come on. There was a mighty rushing wind that came into that room. And then it says that it came upon everybody like tongues of fire, the Holy Spirit. Come on, Holy Spirit, fill this room. Come on, Holy Spirit, fill this room. Holy Spirit, I'm talking to the Holy Ghost for just a couple of minutes real quick. Hold on. Watch this, Dr. George. Because that same mighty Russian wind, watch this. It's not out here anymore. It's in here. And every time I speak, that's the mighty Russian wind coming out of me. So the mighty Russian wind is blowing in this room right now. And some of you, come on, Sister Christy, that's it. I receive it. That's what we ought to be doing right now. Somebody say, I receive that. Come on. Somebody say, I receive that. Come on. Let's get a little church in this house. Come on. Somebody say, I receive that. As a matter of fact, I want you to talk to me. Dr. George tonight, he wants you to talk back to him. This is the only time you can talk back to me. Any other time, you're going to get the mighty Russian wind. All right. Anyway, so... <laughs> All right, so, so you, you, we're going to flow in this thing. The mighty Russian wind is going to get us back to our first love. Come on, somebody. You're going to fall in love with Jesus tonight. When y'all come back tonight, all of you in this room with a friend, with somebody else, when y'all come back tonight with a friend tonight, amen. amen. Come on, somebody. Someone say, I receive. Some of you are going to not even wait for the praise team to turn on. You're not even going to wait for the worship team. You're going to be right here at this altar. In love with Jesus, in love with God, in love with the calling. Come on, somebody. All right, so that's the first thing right there. Oh, did I give you some more? No, we don't need to talk about that. Here's the second thing that's going to happen during this conference. Stir up the gift. So let's look at 2 Timothy 1.6 in the CEV translation. I, I want to pour it out there so I can tell you what the second thing that's going to happen through this conference it says, it says, so I ask you to make full use of the gift God gave you when I placed my hands on you. Use it well. Did you see what that said? Make full use of the gift God gave you. The second group of people, here's what's going to happen during this conference. You're going to stir up the potential on the inside of you. You're going to stir up the creativity that God put on the inside of you. You're going to stir up the dreams. You're going to stir up the ideas, God-given ideas. You're going to stir up the impact that you're going to make. You're going to stir up the influence that God put on the inside of you. Come on, somebody. There's something. There's a plan that God gave you that's going to, boom, it's going to make a difference in people's lives. And that's what's going to happen to some of you in this house. You business owners in this room, some of y'all uh, entrepreneurs that are, are in this room, some of y'all that run companies, some of y'all that are dreaming about making your own company. Listen, there's going to be a stirring up on the inside of you that's going to happen, that's going to take you to another level. You're going to be, watch this, you're going to be peculiar. You're going to be set apart. You're not going to be like everybody else that starts a business in this city. You're going to be different. They're, you're going to be famous. God said that to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. I will make your name famous uh, you will be recognized and the last thing that this scripture says use it well that means you can use the gift uh, the potential that is on the inside of you that God put there God put that there so that you can use it not just so you can sound pretty not so that you can just look pretty not so that you can just smell pretty but that you can make an impact every single where you go Come on, praise God. The potential that's on the inside of you, the power that is at work within you. Ephesians 3.20. Someone say, I receive and believe that. Because I'm going to tell you, Brother Tony, Sister Trish back there, you got dreams inside of you that I hope we don't take it to the grave. And then when we get into God's presence, he's going to say, ¿Por qué no lo usates? Porque no usaste lo que yo te di, el don. Why didn't you use what I gave you? 
Maybe because you went to the wrong church and they didn't teach you that you had a gift on the inside of you. Maybe you went to the wrong church and you went to the wrong pastor that didn't teach you that you have a gift, God-given gift that was placed on the inside of you. And you need to use it well. Come on, somebody. You need to make full use of the gift God has put on the inside of you. Why didn't you build that business? You had a desire for it. You had a dream for it. I even sent you the people. I even sent you the tools. Pero no, porque no creíste. No querías a creer. Pero en esta, en en esta obra aquí esta noche, en esta conferencia, estas tres noches, vamos a tener gente que van a creer y que van a usar los dones que Dios te puso adentro de ustedes y vas a hacer y vas a ver que Él te va a dar todo lo que necesitas. <laughs> yeah, you didn't come to church this morning. This conference. The word conference means to come together, to put all of us together and make something happen. Come on, I know a lot of you in this house, in this room, there are some ideas that you are going to bring to this church that's going to, whoa, I never thought we could do that because I'm just a little Hispanic in a little city of Snyder. We're just here barely getting by. No, that's the wrong thinking. We need to break that off of you and start thinking like God thinks. You remember, you were made in his image and in his likeness. Come on. All right? Come on. So some of you in here, first of all, some of you are going to stir up your first love. You're going to get back to the passion, the fire of the love of God. Amen? Amen. Come on. Amen. Others of you, you're going to stir up the potential, the power, the impact, the influence that's on the inside of you that God placed on the inside of you to make a difference out here, and you're going to use it well. Come on, someone say amen. Someone say I receive and believe that. Amen. Come on, somebody. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking prophetically now into your life, all right? All right? <laughs> so because I've, I've, uh, I can flow in on all those. Okay, so, so here it is. So, again, that second batch. Here's the third group of people, and this is going to happen during this conference right here. Let's read, because the, part, the other part in that scripture says that, uh, that you received when I laid hands on you. So here's the third group of people that are going to get something. You're going to get the impartation. You're going to get impartations. Why, since there's going to be a transfer of anointings. There's going to be a transfer of mantles. There's going to be a transfer of grace. Come on. Because Paul told Timothy, he says, remember to stir up the gift that's on the inside of you that you got by how? By the laying on of hands. And let me tell you, Dr. George, I promise you, is going to bring that. And he, he, he didn't want to tell me last night, but he said there's something going on. And he kind of said a little bit, but, but it just fell in line to what I was going to already talk about. It confirmed it. But there's going to be an impartation. Watch this. Watch this. Shorobosaka. Watch this. Because some of you in here, you may not be called to, uh, to business ownership. You may not. You may be called to ministry. You may be called to prison ministry. Not to go into prison and start a ministry, but to, from out here in there. Uh, uh, some of you are going to start a children's facility. Some of you are going to start a Christian academy. Some of y'all are going to start a Christian business of some sort, helping people in other countries. We already do that through Bill Winston, through uh, Sam Segundo Ministries, and through Pastor Israel Proctor in Israel. We already do that now already. Every month we sow, see y'all guys know that, every month a portion of your giving goes to help them over there, especially in the land of Israel. Come on. Watch this. Ephesians chapter 4, 4 through 13, message translation, just for time's sake. I want you to see this. Oh, glory. It's a lot of reading. I'm going to read it off my page here. It says this. Watch this. Just listen to me closely. This is what it says. It says, you were all called. So say I'm called. To travel on the same road and in the same direction. 
So stay together. So I say conference. Here we go. We're together. Right? We're on the same road, same direction, staying together. It says both outwardly and inwardly. You have one master, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all who rules over all. And he works through all and is present in all. And everything you are and think and do is permeated with oneness. But that doesn't mean you should all look and speak and act the same. Out of, gen out of the generosity of Christ, each of us is given his own gift. All right? Did y'all hear that? Stir up the gift. You're giving your own gift, all right? Here we go. The text for this is, he climbed the high mountain, he captured the enemy, and he seized the possessions. That's what that word means right there. He handed it out. Watch this. I want you to listen to this. He handed it all out in gifts to the people. So say gifts. It says, is it not true that the one who climbed up also climbed down, down to the valley of earth? And the one who climbed down is the one who climbed back up, up to the highest heaven. He handed out gifts above and below Filled heaven with his gifts and filled earth with his gifts. Now, what's what these gifts are? He handed out gifts of apostles, of prophets, of evangelists, and of pastor teachers to train Christ's fullness. To train Christ's followers in skilled servant work, working within Christ's body, the church, until we're all moving rhythmically and easily with each other. Efficient and graceful in response to God's son. Fully mature adults, fully developed within and without. Fully alive like Christ. Ooh, glory. So one group of people, they're going to get back to their first love. Stir up the gift. Second group of people, you're going to stir up the potential, the dreams, the ideas, the influence, the impact. And the third group of people, you're going to get hands laid on, and you're going to get a transfer of mantles, of gifts coming, and the graces, the uh, impartations. That's going to be necessary for your life. Come on. The gift of the pastor, the gift of the teacher, the gift of the apostle, the gift of the prophet, and the evangelist. Because some of you in here, you're called to either one of those five or if not, several of those five. And you don't even know it. But the stirring up of the gift is going to happen through this conference. Come on, how many of y'all excited what's going to happen? Amen? Come on, amen. Praise God. Amen. Wow. Let's play a little music in the background. We're done. I'm done for this morning. I'm done for this morning. I just wanted to give you that, what to expect from this conference. It's tonight, Monday night, Tuesday night. Come on, stand on your feet slowly. Stand on your feet slowly. Boy, the Spirit's already up in this house. Move it. We're done for this morning, family. I want to remind you about something. Please don't show up to these nights nonchalantly, especially when it comes to the services. I want you to really come with expectancy. I want you to really come with there is something about to happen inside of my life, within me. 
going to shift the entire atmosphere for all, everything outside. Because, I, I mean, life is too heavy already to try to do it on your own. Just lean on the Holy Spirit, man. <laughs> Come on. Fire. I like Brother Eric there. Every time I see Brother Eric there, he's like, fire. Fuego. Yes. Come on, somebody lift your hands to heaven. Dr. George, would you mind coming up here and praying us out, please? We're going to start to transition. Lord, confirm the word with signs and wonders and miracles. Lord, I thank you that there's a portal that has opened up now, Father. I thank you that the heavens have opened, Father, for your people, your sheep. Father, I thank you that your sheep hear your voice and they follow. And because they follow the true shepherd, the shepherd is a shepherd of abundance. The shepherd has increase. The shepherd has favor. The shepherd has abundance. The shepherd has glory and power. I thank you that even at the sound of my voice in agreement with the word, in agreement with the, the office of the pastor, we thank you that the five offices are going to operate in this conference, Father. They're offices of grace. They're offices of favor. They carry the office, Father, of increase, Father. I thank you as your people begin to draw, Father, the river will begin to flow. I thank you that your people will now walk in the know and walk in the flow. And they'll operate in the overflow. I thank you, Father, we'll never be the same again. Because we're going from faith to faith and from glory to glory. I thank you, Father, that this glory and this anointing has begun today. I thank you, Father, that your people will be hungry and thirsty to come back tonight and every night. I thank you, Father, that even in this conference, I tell the devil that no weapon from against these people will prosper. You will not delay no more. You will not stop him no more. This is a generation, Father, that you're raising up for such a time as it. They're going to carry with such a favor, an extreme, unconditional, unlimited, unprecedented, and distinctive favor, Father. Lord, I declare over your people, Father, let the fire of the Holy Ghost uh, begin to burn in their bones. Uh, they'll be like Jeremiah's everywhere, Father. Oh, thy word within their heart and in their mouth, and it was like fire shut up in their bones, Father. I set myself in agreement, and I release right now, Father, and I stir up the gifts in them. I stir up the Holy Ghost in them. I stir up the hunger and the thirst. And you said, blessed and enhance and highly favor those that will hunger and thirst for God. I thank you that there's a church here. They're not only going to be hungry, but they're going to stir up others, Father. It'll be, Lord God, like wildfire in Snyder and all over in the name of Jesus. I release them, Father. I bless them today. And, Father, keep them excited. Keep them with high expectation because that's the kind of God you're going to show up and display in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Everybody say it. Come on. Amen.